Welcome back. We're kicking off the new year with Franco from Beachside Moto. Franco and I met through the motorcycle community, and he's taking us out today to some really cool spots near Los Angeles. So we could talk about how Beachside Moto started from a small group of friends to a growing community that hosts some of the largest group rides in SoCal. <laughs> what it do? Oh, what up, Tim? Good to see you, man. Hell yeah. I'm super excited to be riding today. Have no idea. It's been a while since I've gone on a nice little ride like this, so really excited that you're, you're taking me on a ride, man. Dude, absolutely. I'm going to take you to some sick spots. <laughs> We're going to go thinking we'll go down, um, get some breakfast, get some coffee, hit some bluffs in Malibu, get a cool view of the ocean. Uh, it's one of the perks of living in LA, you get the uh, coast. And then we'll hit the canyons, end up at the old place for some lunch, and see where the road takes us from there. Right on, man. <laughs> this is a sick bike, by the way. Tell us a little bit about this, about your bike. It's a 2007 carbureted bike here, 900cc. I bought it from my buddy. He kind of did all the work on it. Um, a lot of cool stuff. We've got the uh, like low profile blinkers on the front and the rear so that way they're not really you know too bulky. Got reflector tape throughout the bike at different spots for uh, more visibility on the road. Aftermarket headlight on the front. Um, if you look near the headlight there's a place where all the gauges would be but it's naked. There's literally nothing there. There's no speedometer, no fuel gauge, no tachometer, nothing. Um, so this bike, you really have to have an instinct for when do you need fuel, how fast you're going. And it really trains you to use your gut instinct when you're on the road. Um, so I know it's really bare bones, but I did make it to Yosemite on this. I got the, um, the racks here for my luggage whenever I go on camping trips. Let's spit some lanes. Let's do it. All I'm right. excited. Me too. <laughs> I love talking to riders about their motorcycles. A motorcycle is like an extension of one's personality. It makes perfect sense that Franco is into the vintage motorcycles since he works as an engineer. He doesn't mind draining the carburetor every night to keep his machine running pristine. Our first stop is Motoring Coffee, and Franco tells me this place not only has great coffee, but a nice space filled with classic cars and motoring enthusiasts. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, this guy's like, what's up? McLaren, bro. Oh yeah, I like it already. Too gangsta. Oh my gosh, this is why you won't see me in LA without a bike. Exactly. Sheesh. Nice, dude. Hell yeah. Let's do it. Gotta try the flat white. It's pretty delicious. And uh, picked up one of these lemon blueberry muffins. Poppy seed. Looks super good. Mm. So we're finally here at Motoring Cafe. It's my first time. This place is really cool, man. Tell Absolutely. me how you heard about this place. Dude, this is a freaking car enthusiast paradise. And just seeing my friends share about it, I had to come here and check it out for myself. And it's really like the motorsports enthusiasts, like, safe haven. Like, this is where you come and talk about cool cars, cool bikes. Um, they have a lot of cool events. This venue itself opened not that long ago. They used to be in Marina Del Rey, and uh, they recently moved to this West LA location, and they're expanding to like San Francisco also. So the motoring club is doing things the right way, apparently. I mean, everybody loves it. Yeah. It's such a cool place to just kick back, work, meet up some, with some friends, and then go for a ride afterwards. Over this wall is like a, a VIP section? Or what's yeah, going on over yeah. Here, so man? behind the plants is the area for club members only. So okay. this is their clubhouse. They pay annual due, and um, 
they get access to all the cool perks, events, lounge spaces that aren't open to the public, which are really exclusive and that's kind of what you want. Everything in LA is, you know, is really crowded, so having an exclusive area is, uh, it's pretty sweet. I'm such a sucker for like, cars and motorcycles indoors. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. the best interior design piece. Exactly, if there's a cafe with like a motorcycle inside, it's like instantly my favorite cafe. Yeah. Doesn't even have to make sense. Spaces like Motoring Coffee seem to be popping up more and more in Los Angeles. My favorite thing about places like this is that you run into some pretty cool people. And today is no exception. We ran into Aggie, who is a member and was kind enough to give us a tour. We met actually at Friendsgiving. At Friendsgiving at, at Back, yeah. At Back. Uh, it was a Friendsgiving organized by the Moto Social. Unofficial, it was super badass. And um, I heard that you're bringing Maving to the US. Yeah, absolutely. Launching in the US in 2024, we've actually had our pre-orders open since December. So people are starting to like get in line. We've got the RM1S that will be available in July. I think people will be excited. It's because the bike has a unique mix of like classic styling, uh, but like modern tech. It has a lot of like real motorcycle DNA in there and the fit and finish and like getting your hands on the bike. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty cool. How did you get started into riding motorcycles? Like how did that passion come about? Dude, it started when I was like 12 years old. I bought myself Without my mom knowing, I convinced my dad to take me to the swamp meet and buy a little pit bike. It was a 50cc two-stroke with a Polestar engine. Oh yeah, and those things. Yeah, I <laughs> cherished that thing. I would like clean the tires, the sidewalls. Yeah. I would just keep it in pristine condition. I would love <laughs> mixing the two-stroke oil with the gasoline. Oh wow. It was just my favorite thing ever. Um, nice. So when I was about 12, I bought one of those. Then when I went to high school, I made a friend who would go uh, camping and his whole family had dirt bikes. It was like a fleet of Honda dirt bikes. Yeah. And he invited me camping one day. I was maybe like 15 years old at, at this point. And I was just exposed into the world of the outdoors and riding motorcycles, like for real. From then I'm like, wow, this is a thing. After that camping trip, I bought a dirt bike. Again, didn't tell my mom. I just convinced my dad and we stashed it in the trunk of the car because we didn't have a truck. <laughs> it was a small dirt bike. It's like it, the fire inside of me just kept growing and it growing. It just takes over. It took over, bro. <laughs> and then I got my M1 license in college. I think I was 19, I got my M1. I got my first street bike, which is a Suzuki GSX-R. Oh, wow. You that went all in. I did. I was like... <laughs> you went from the little pocket the... bike, drag and knee, to straight up, you're ready for the Jigster, huh? Seriously. <laughs> it was a lot of bike for me, I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot of bike, but um, it, was, it was so fun. I remember in college, I would just sit outside and do my homework while staring at the bike. Oh, man. <laughs> I would just kick my feet up and just stare at it. <laughs> and like, do my homework and look at it. Knowing physics, does that help you on a motorcycle? I'm gonna say it does. Yeah. Understanding the laws of nature, like momentum, the equations of, of um, like Einstein's three equations, like understanding how important mass is and how much you weigh in comparison to other things and how fast you're going. Um, studying like the sciences, I feel like has really grounded me to understand the reality of what I'm doing when I'm riding a motorcycle. It's like a <clears throat> car engine on two wheels. Right. And I'm going quick. Yeah. So it really helps me know what the risk is and yeah. what I can do and what I shouldn't. Um, so definitely having like the engineering mindset has helped me keep myself safe on the road. Um, and I remember actually, I was taking physics and I, after like the class ended, I went to my bike, I was putting on my gear and my physics professor pulls up he sees me, he's like, you're taking my class and you're writing this thing? <laughs> because he knew also, yeah. like if we're studying the laws of nature, we know the risk of yeah. going too fast around a corner or, or um, the theory of like friction and like how if you're sliding, it's so much worse than like making sure you keep the tire planted and not moving on right. the road for a more effective stopping. And so, when he told me that, I was like, yes, I love it. Like, I love riding, I can't give it up. Yeah, I ended up selling the Suzuki GS6R and um, I was like, okay, I need to focus on school. And then when I finished school, I was like, okay, it's time to get back on this thing. And now you're into the vintage bikes. 
Yeah, vintage suit, anything old, sign yeah. me up. I'm yeah. gonna take you to the old place later. It's literally built out of old things. That's pretty much the origin story of Franco's passion for motorcycles. Right on, man, <laughs> right on. Thanks for sharing that. Checking out motoring coffee has been a blast, but I think it's time to take you on some canyon roads along the coast. Oh, man. And I can tell you a little bit more about how Beachside Moto Club got started, because that's where it all started right there, along the coast. Oh, dude, I'm excited, man. I haven't been on a coast ride in so long, so I'm ready to get out the city. Hit the canyons, bro. Let's do it. Let's do it, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You jumping off the curb or what? I feel so lucky to live close to one of the best riding havens in the world. The Pacific Coast Highway is iconic and offers stunning views of the ocean as well as some amazing roads through the canyons. Franco is taking us to one of his favorite lookout spots, which I've never been to. Winter in LA, huh? This is winter in LA, dude. Look at this. <laughs> we ride year round. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I love it. Out here in a t-shirt, right by the water. Man, this is perfect, bro. This is so like perfect day to ride, man. Yeah. People in the, on the East Coast are shivering right now. I'm sorry. This is the point at the bluffs. It's okay. a very hidden little park where they do a lot of um, like small ceremonies. Yeah. And um, it's, it's really low key to be honest. Not a lot of people know about this spot and it's got amazing views. Um, clearly, clearly yeah. man, this is. Overlooking the Pacific Ocean with Pacific Coast Highway right underneath us. Um, this is as good as it gets. This is why we live in Los Angeles. Oh for yeah, places for like sure. this. You can do whatever you want in one day. You, I don't know where you can find places like this. And the roads are super windy here. So unlike other parts of the country, roads are like yeah. all straight. Everything's really parallel or, or uh, perpendicular. Here, you got so many windy roads. It's perfect for motorcycles. For sure. And there's like different levels of like, like windiness, I guess. There's like easy ones and there's like the super technical ones. You got it all here. It's great because you can start off here and improve your skill level until you're like really dragging the knee. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I mean, like, is this where like Beachside Moto kind of started the idea for it? Like, tell me about that. Absolutely. I mean, it's in the name, right? Beachside. And it is. Adam and myself became really good friends. And um, back in 2021, we hosted a, a group ride with some of our closest friends nice. in the canyons and um, it was so much fun. We started to brainstorm what it could be. And so we, th we were thinking like, what if we start a group? Yeah. Let's start a group and see what happens. He and I were brainstorming names and I checked on, on Instagram, is Beachside Moto Club taken? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's not. And it okay. wasn't, that's crazy it, Yeah, though. so I snatched it. So like Adam and I have a lot of friends in the motorcycle community and we're like, let's host a group ride and see what happens. And we invited a lot of our personal friends. Yeah. And um, when we were inviting them and they were confirming they were going to go, we would give them a shout out on the Beachside Instagram okay. to say, hey, so and so is coming on Saturday. We'll see you there. Yeah. So and so is also joining us. And so that kind of was a super nice personal touch. They shared it with their, friend, their Instagrams and their friends saw it. And it's just that network. It just grew outward. Just grew. First group ride, we hosted about 50, 50 or so people. Oh, wow. And um, we were like, whoa, this is a lot more people than we expected. We started off with that group of friends of like eight riders in right. the canyons. And then it went to 50. And immediately, the right after that, I think it hit like 90. That's a big jump from eight to 50. That's, I know. That's crazy, dude. I, I would credit um, Adam's genius marketing strategy yeah. with that and just us 
knowing a lot of people. And so um, we got a lot of support from the community and we've just kept going since and it's been really fun being a part of Beachside Moto Club. I'm also gonna wanna take you on that actual ride. We'll take you on that ride where oh, the, the ride. idea came out. Who knows, maybe you'll come up with something. That's the ride that gets your juices flowing, right? Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I do my best, my best thoughts usually come from just like riding, you know, and I'm, all I'm always inspired. It's always like, I don't know, when I'm in that focused, you know, like zen state, that's like one of my best ideas come. I've worked up an appetite. <laughs> Same. Hope you did too. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, man. All right, dude. Let's do it. Let's hit the twisties, bro. Let's do it. We made it, bro. <laughs> Heck yeah. Oh, I'm starving. What's up, y'all? We're here at the old place. Uh, came up with Holly Davidson Lowrider S. It's my baby right here. Let's check it out. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Let's do this. Hey, Cheers. Man. It's a great ride. That was uh, Mulholland. Legendary road up to the old place, through the mountains, in the canyons, as good as it gets. Oh yeah. And once again, this is my first time to the old place, man. Welcome. Welcome. It really takes after its name. Yeah. Everything inside is original. It's been um, furnished with just like old doors from super old buildings and just, it's, it's really the old place. Like it's, it really is uh, a super fun spot to come right to and have lunch at. Oh, and you get to see a lot of cool bikes when you get here. Yeah, it was nice. It gives you that like old Western feeling when you come here. Kind of like some of the uh, ghost towns in California, like yeah. Calico, Pioneer Town. Uh, that's the kind of vibe I get and I love that aesthetic. Like that vintage old like, Hard yeah. work pays off type of thing. Work with your hands. Mm -hmm. oh, Speaking of which, our food is ready. <laughs> All right, let's go, man. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, we got the, the steak and potatoes. Should know. All right. Steak sandwich with potatoes. Camera crew's got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all five crew members right here. <laughs> You're a crew of five. You know? even go to film school. Oh man. You don't even need it. It's just natural talent. YouTube, bro. YouTube University. <laughs> <laughs> Day five of 2023, uh, 2024. For reals. Not even a week yet. Day five. Let's see what the rest of the year looks like. I'm most excited about the camp out. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. When is the camp out happening? May 3rd through the fifth, which is perfect time. It's spring yeah. in Kernville, about two hours north of LA. And um, we are hosting it at Friendly Campground, which is an amazing campground, like right next to the river. And it's about a, I don't know, 30 minute ride to the lake, which is Lake Isabella. Yeah. And we're gonna do a sunset ride around there. 
very isolated. They have a grocery store, they have um, multiple restaurants, but they're very supportive. We tell them we're gonna show up in advance. They hook us up with like, you know, giving us the entire sitting space just for us. Um, we do bring quite a few guests, so we warn them they're gonna get ambushed with orders within like yeah. an hour. I mean, you're bringing 130 people and everybody needs to eat. Ironing out all of the logistics with the actual camp out, like what events we're gonna host for the Total Race Tournament. It's kind of like a March Madness style. Um, we have to find someone to design the trophy for the first place winner. Have you ever been here before? The winery? Yeah. Um, it just opened not that long ago, so we can check it out. It's open right now. 1870, the old place. Yeah, it does. Got the jewelry here. A lot of cool stones. Mm -hmm. That unique gifts. Yeah. Should we get something for like the rooftop when we go back? Oh, not a bad idea. I'll try that. Beat this one. Right here. Okay, we'll try this one. I'll try that. One. I got try something. Show. It's Oktoberfest right there. <laughs> this is for when we get back. Yes. To Korea Town. Yes. All Enjoy right. it on the roof. Yeah. The grand finale. Awesome. All right. So I just took Tim to the uh, old place for the first time. He absolutely loved it. Um, next up is going to be heading back to Korea Town so that we can uh, get some views of Los Angeles. We'll get views of the hills, just downtown LA and um, talk a little bit more about a couple things Beachside Motor Club has coming up, what to look forward to, and uh, I'm super excited. I don't want this day to end. <laughs> Me either. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're here on the rooftop of the Thompson apartment building in Koreatown, and from here, Got a pretty good vista of a lot of landmarks in Los Angeles. Um, Koreatown's pretty popping. Great place to go grab drinks, hang out with some friends. One of my favorite places is the Intercrew, which is actually seen right here in this corner with the orange border. My friend Cami works there, she's the event coordinator, and um, we've talked about having like a crew, like a beachside moto crew social there uh, where she'll let us park our bikes on the sidewalk so hopefully that gets to happen soon um, but if you look in the distance you can see downtown LA you can see the US Bank Tower and the Intercontinental Building all right so we're walking the perimeter of the Thompson building and we're gonna check out what's going on at the other corners let's see what kind of views we can uh, we can find all right so this side of the building is looking north and north of Koreatown is Griffith Observatory, which you can see on the mountain right there. It's the only building on that hill. It's pretty badass. They have that white one right there. <laughs> that's, that's sick. That's Griffith right there. One of two active planetariums in Los Angeles is Griffith Observatory. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go watch a planetarium show. And then just to the left, is the good old Hollywood sign on the hill as well. You can see the uh, radio towers. Um, if you go hike up Runyon Canyon, you'll be right underneath the Hollywood sign and the, um, you'll be above the Hollywood sign underneath the radio towers. And um, if you keep looking further to the left from the Hollywood sign, you'll catch Hollywood itself. You can see the W, we can see the Capitol Records building, Bro, why'd you make me stand next to the Gaylord sign, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's a last name. It's not what you think. Over here, another one of my favorite bars in Koreatown is the Normandy Club, which is kind of small and hard to see, but the white lettering of the neon sign, Hotel Normandy, it's the um, in-house bar at that hotel. And one of my buddies, Jonathan, was the uh, bar manager there. And when he left to go start his own business, 
he, um, they had a going away party for him. And at the end of the party, they put a picture of Jonathan on the wall so that he can be there in spirit forever. And it's so funny, but also very heartwarming to know that the staff really loved him that much. The wall is blank besides a tiny little photo of Jonathan's portrait just watching the bar staff. <laughs> All right, we got the brewskis. Dude. That was a great ride today, man. What a way to celebrate. I know, dude. I'm glad we picked these up. Woo! Cheers. Cheers, my man. Let's see how this is. This is from the Old Place Winery. Mm. I dig it, bro. Yeah, that's... I dig it. It's almost like a Guinness. Black wow. lager. The Nighthawk. Perfect for a couple of night hawks. There we themselves. go. That's exactly you know? where we are. Honestly, dude, thank you for you know the ride today, showing me around. It was absolutely my pleasure to show you some of the spots I love to go to, tell you a little bit about the history of Beachside Moto Club. And along the way, we ran into some pretty cool people. We did. And that's the, that's the thing about riding motorcycles, dude. It's like you just, every time I'm out, without fail, I run into some cool people, familiar faces. Yeah. You know, people in the motorcycle community, like you said, it's such a small community. It's so tiny. I mean, you're connected to anybody with like two, two people. Um, that's why we got to always pay respect to the motorcycle community and be good to everybody Yeah. and just always have good intentions. We all got day jobs, we're not trying to make a, a buck out of anything that we do. Right. It's just about being good and people recognize that. I had such an amazing time today, Franco. Thank Dude. you so much. Yeah. Man. Absolutely. Time. Hey, anytime you want to hang out, go for a ride, I'll show you some spots that right. you may have not experienced yet and I'm happy to just take you around. It's my pleasure. Awesome, man. So like, where can we, where can we find you? Where can we find Beachside Moto? Where can we sign up for these events? First of all, um, if you're on Instagram, check out Beachside Moto Club and uh, there we'll have the ride calendar for the entire year. So you're able to pencil in what works for you. It happens once a month on a Saturday. We announce all of our upcoming events, um, but if you want to know specifically about the camp out, Type in bmccampout.com and it'll take you to our website that outlines what the campout is, um, what you can expect from going, photos from previous years, and it'll take you, if you click the buy tickets here, it'll take you to the um, ticketing platform so you can get your own tickets and join us. So bmccampout.com, super easy to remember. Hopefully um, you guys check it out and I'll see you at the campout. Awesome. I'll add links below so you can guys just click on the links and it will take you right there as well. Appreciate it, Tim. Awesome, man. <laughs> Dude. Woo. It's been good. Hell yeah. All right. Peace out. Peace. From K-Town. Hi, <laughs> right, Franco. Catch you later, brother. Absolutely. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And thanks for coming along this ride with Franco and I. Don't forget to check out Beachside Moto and subscribe for more awesome adventures. Catch you later. Ride safe. Peace.